Hi, my name is Jean Tung. I'm one of the pediatric gastroenterologists here at the Mayo Clinic. Today I would like to talk about infliximab in children, or otherwise known as Remicade. Now this was approved for Crohn's disease back in 1997 and for ulcerative colitis in 2005. Understandably, we have many parents who are concerned about using this in children because of um, wanting to know how long their children will last on Remicade and if there have been side effects after this many years. So this was the question that the group in Cedar sinai in Los Angeles, California wanted to find out. So they looked back at their records and looked for children who were under 21, had received Remicade, and where they could look at, back at their records for at least one year after they re started receiving Remicade. So based on these rules, they found 188 patients, 157 had Crohn's disease, and 31 had ulcerative colitis. On average, these patients had been on Remicade for about 2 to 2.5 years. So let's talk about the Crohn's patients first. About two-thirds were also taking methotrexate, azathioprine, or 6 mercaptopurine. Unfortunately, about 4% of them didn't respond to Remicade at all. Of those who initially responded, 88% were still on Remicade at one year later, 80% were still on Remicade two years later, and about 72% were able to stay on Remicade five years after they first started. Of those that were able to stay on Remicade, about 25% of them needed a dose increase. Now a dose increase could either mean increasing how much you received at the time of the dose to 10 milligrams per kilogram, it could mean going more frequently, like every six weeks, or it could mean both situations. Now, let's switch over to ulcerative colitis. Of 31 patients with ulcerative colitis that received Remicade, about one-third were also taking methotrexate, azathioprine, or 6 mercaptopurine. Unfortunately, 25% did not respond to Remicade at all. And this is in line with other research studies that we've seen where Remicade tends to work better for patients with Crohn's disease than for ulcerative colitis. Of the patients who were able to stay on Remicade, at one year, about 70% of them were able to avoid having to go for surgery. 12.9% did require an increase in their dose, and again, that could mean the dose at the time of Remicade or having to go more frequently. Aside from not responding to Remicade at all or losing response, there were other reasons that Remicade needed to be stopped during the course of time in this study. Several people developed antibodies or had infusion reactions. A few people developed rash or a joint pain. Only one had to stop Remicade because of repeated infections. And fortunately, no one developed cancer. There was one patient that had a disease related to the Epstein-Barr virus. That's the virus that causes mono. So in this study, cedars sinai didn't really notice uh, an advantage of being on methotrexate in addition to Remicade. They did wonder if this was related to being on too low of a dose of methotrexate, or maybe this group was just too small to really see a difference. So in summary, what I take away from this study is, number one, if you have Crohn's disease and respond to Remicade, you should be able to stay on this for at least a few years. If you have ulcerative colitis, it's a little less likely that you'll respond to Remicade, but if it works for you, you should be able to avoid surgery for at least one year. And number three, overall Remicade is safe, and this corresponds to several studies that we've seen now in both adults and children. So this information is from one center, and we could argue that this is still a rather small group, but I hope that sharing this information with you today is helpful in helping you decide whether or not to start Remicade or feel comfortable in continuing it. Thank you.